Continental Tire Coach's Corner. Florida Atlantic. My Owls go from 3-9 and nine to 9-3. Nine and three. Next game is this Saturday against North Texas. And uh, we just had a quiz during the commercial break. Paulie goes, where is Florida Atlantic University? And I said, all right. Well, they're on the Atlantic side of Florida. Pritchie said Orlando. That's incorrect. My geography skills aren't that great. Yeah, but you graduated number two in your class I in know, high school. I was able to get away from the geography stuff. It's not even near the ocean. Uh, Fort Myers in Sarasota. And then uh, I said Boca Raton. You're correct, Dan. Yes. You're owls. Thank you. My owls. Lane Kiffin joins us now. How's morale there, Coach? It is awesome. These um, kids are having a blast. Shoot, they won eight eight games in a row. Uh, pretty pretty easy to have fun doing that. What did you think? What were the expectations when you went there? Well, there weren't many expectations around here, you know, because they really had never won. You know, they hadn't been to a bowl game in ten years. And, um, I think somebody said they had one team beat one winning team in three years. So uh, the expectations were really low, but that didn't matter. That wasn't our expectations. You know, when you come to a place like that, you know, the number one goal is you got to change the way people think. You got to make them think the way that you're used to thinking being around championship teams. How surprised were people that you took that job considering, you know, you left Alabama and you were going to Florida Atlantic and you probably had to explain what Florida Atlantic was and where it was. Well, I think, you know, for people that, you know, looked at it, I think there was a lot of, oh, he's just trying to be a head coach again. So he's just taking any job. And it was not that at all um, because I knew that, you know, I'm not naive that the next job that I take as a head coach, if I don't win, the storyline for my career probably is, oh, he's a good offensive coordinator and won a bunch of championships, scored a bunch of points, but he's not a good head coach. And that's probably your last shot. So, when I looked at this job after meeting with them and meeting with the president who had come here from Clemson, uh, they had a plan. They had a plan to give us, you know, what we needed to build a championship program, and that's what we've done. Explain to me what is going on with you and Nick Saban. Uh, not much. He doesn't respond to my text messages. So, <laughs> Does he know how to text? He is, um, he is old school on that, and so – he has this whole thing about he never has sent a text in his life. So that's nothing to do with me. That's just, he could be the number one recruit in the country. He just doesn't text. And um, he just has this old school philosophy that I'm not going to give in to texting. So he doesn't, doesn't text, doesn't tweet, doesn't do those things, um, which is nothing wrong. It's a, that's just how he is. What's your relationship like? Uh, good. You know, we left on, I'm not going to say perfect, but you know, when you have a, uh, you know, the last 26 times we walked on a football field together, we were 26 and 0. You know, and came together when he hired me and said he wanted to change the offense and thought they'd become stale and old school. And um, so I think we did that. Three SEC championships, you know, three play- playoffs all three years and three SEC offensive players of the year. Um, I'd call it a pretty successful marriage. Does he miss you? Um, I, I don't know if he miss- misses me. Maybe on. Uh, third down the other night might have. <laughs> <laughs> but, but the rat poison comment is i mean it feels like you're trolling him a little bit there with the rat poison comment are you having a little bit of fun with coach saban well first off what you guys don't realize is he doesn't see it so you guys think i'm trolling him like, <laughs> he, he doesn't even know what twitter is so he certainly doesn't see it yeah, but somebody. What do you think he's like? Think, think he's, like he's retweeting it. Yeah, but his daughter has to say to him, "Hey, uh, Dad. By the way, uh, this is what Lane sent today. Somebody's got to be doing no. that." Now he. This is what it is. He's the best motivator in the world. And what, I don't know if you guys realize when you guys, you know, he complains at you guys and goes off on his tangent about you guys are rat poison because you say his team's so good and everything. <laughs> he loves that because he's using that. No, he is. I've been there. He's using that in the team meeting later that day to tell everybody, don't believe it. Don't buy into this rap, boys, and don't listen to you guys. No, he's, he's using that. And so I'm doing the same thing. I just do it in a different way. I'm doing the same thing. I just tell our players, you know, and our fans uh, via Twitter, you know, not to listen to the rap, boys. And, you know, he just does it in his team meeting. He's Lane, Lane Kiffin, Florida Atlantic head coach, joining us, Continental Tire Coaches Corner. Have you been uh, in touch with Tennessee? 
you or your people been in touch with Tennessee? Uh, I've talked to a few of the um, people back there that I'm close with that are friends that, you know, we had a great time that year together. Um, I have not um, talked to the athletic director. Jimmy Sexton's my agent. So when it, you know, when you know how those things go, when they first come down, they talk to the agents and, you know, John Curry, you know, made it clear, I guess, to him who he was interested in. And uh, Jimmy had Greg Schiano also. And, and so knew a lot of people there because he had Phil Palmer and, I didn't go that direction, so I, uh, I have not, as much as you think that I've thought a lot about this, because I reach me time, I've not thought about it at all, because uh, I've never, you know, John Curry never expressed any interest. Can you describe what the last hours were like when you were Tennessee's head coach? Uh, interesting, that's for sure. Um, you know, I tried to do something that was very unique, and like kind of everything I do, even though it, I mean, well, it gets taken the wrong way when you and my agent and everyone around said, Hey, just get on a plane and get to USC. That's what everybody does. You know, they don't meet with the media, their press conferences at their new place. And then they explain things. I said, you know what? The Tennessee media was awesome to us. Our one year there. So I said, I'm doing something different. I just want to explain to these guys Mm. because they don't know. I want them to be the first one to know off camera sit down with, you know, the 10, 12 main people there. So I said, get them in a room. And I want to explain why I'm going home, you know, dream job, you know, all three kids born in California, memories there of, you know, almost winning three straight national championships. So I wanted to explain that to them. And then that backfired because one of the people said, oh, no, we're going to put a camera in here. And then the SID got an argument with them. And so it all all made it look bad. I was actually trying to do something very unique because those guys, they had been really good to us. Were you worried about your safety? No, I wasn't worried about my safety. That gets a little bit, uh, the burning of the mattresses and all that stuff. I could see that out the, out of the window, but um, I would not. I wasn't worried for my safety because all that does, and I said it in that next day, that is not a negative. That's the passion of the SEC and especially Tennessee. They're, they're passionate. And I said it before, if they were having a party when you left, that's a bad thing. If they're burning things. <laughs> That's a good thing because it means they really liked you and they really liked what was going on and they knew we were going to win a lot of games there. So I took it as a positive. What's your dream job now? Uh, Florida Atlantic. No, oh, I know. No, I've got I've gotten older, so now you just say where you're at. <laughs> of course you do. <laughs> yeah, but if I talked to you a couple of years ago, then you probably actually have a destination, a different destination. No, it really – it was USC. And it's like anything, it's like – you know, think about when you were a child, if you grew up in a certain area, you know, and when people say, where's your favorite place you lived? It's usually somewhere when you were young. And so as a coach, you know, I was really young. It's basically almost where I started was USC. And I was there for six years with Pete Carroll. And, you know, we went to five straight BCS games and played for three national championships and won five conference championships. So three Heisman winners. So that was my memory of USC. And my thought was, okay, Three kids born there, you know, know the area. So many friends, so many friends are there. That hey, why, we can go back and do the same thing. If I was there from day one with Pete Carroll, why can't we just follow the same exact recipe and have the same success he did? Well, they hit us with a little wild card. You know, when I was interviewing, they said, "No, we're fine. It might be one or two scholarships at most." Well, we get there, we take the job, and all of a sudden, NCAA hits us with the death penalty. Yeah. Thirty scholarships lost. Two bowl went. Two bowl. People don't understand. We couldn't play in bowl games for two years. From that. Every junior and senior on our roster could leave immediately without penalty. I mean, that's unheard of. You know, the LA Times the next day is talking about basically the death penalty and get ready for 40,000 people in the Coliseum and three, four win seasons like what happened at Miami when they got basically the same penalty years ago. And we managed through that to go 28 and 15, you know, have winning seasons every year, go 10 and 2 one year. And, and But everyone forgot about that. So is what it is give me the likelihood give me rank rank just have some fun with me entertain me if you can here um raiders usc tennessee the likelihood that you would go to back to any of those places what would be number one two and three on that list oh god i don't know if i can play that game Dan. that's a tough game (laughs) it's just us talking come on this this won't make social media no, not at all. It won't make it within the, It won't make it by the time before we even hang up. <laughs> no, I can't answer that one. Uh, we, uh, I, I do know this. 
I look at all the places, whether it any good, bad, and different, as where I am today, I'm a way better coach than where I was back then because of all the places I went, and especially one that you didn't add to those, Alabama, because I worked for the, the greatest coach in the history of college football for three years and got to learn from him. Oh, I didn't think that was on the list. Uh, I, didn't, I, I didn't think there was any chance of going back to Alabama. I was trying to look at the likelihood of the other three. <laughs> you never know. Didn't you watch third down the other night? I know. I know. He, he, he's missing you. He's missing you. Uh, hey, great to talk to you. I can hear it in your voice. You're having fun. Uh, your team's 9-3. and three. You got North Texas coming up this weekend. Uh, thanks for joining us, Lane. You got it, Dan. Have a great weekend. That's Lane Kiffin. My owls. Florida Atlantic University. Yeah, I thought maybe he would give me the you know, priority list there. Going back to the Raiders, nah. USC, nah. Tennessee, you know, Tennessee might be number one on the list, as crazy as that may sound, with what's going on now. But he said that nobody's reached out to him. I haven't heard anything, but I thought it might be fun just to see if that was a possibility. Yeah, Fritzy. I like the multiple references to the third down struggle that he might have been able to <laughs> Yes, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I like the fact that he's trolling Saban, but he, and Saban doesn't respond to any of his tweets, but he knows the message is probably being delivered there. Continental Tire Coach's Corner from sun to rain to snow and everything in between. Continental Tires, you engineered, uh, has an engineered uh, tired for you and what you do. Extraordinary performance and reliability, putting confidence into driving. For more info and the location of a dealer near you, visit ContinentalTire.com. Continental Tire for what you do. For more Dan Patrick Show, tune to Audience Channel 239 on DirecTV or download the Dan Patrick Show app.